Hello, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. OK. Uh, so hello. Today, I would like to present some results from my uh, last research about using an actor framework uh, for scientific com computing. I would like to show you some opportunities connected to this topic and also some uh, of the challenges. Uh, but first, I would like to introduce uh, the term uh, workflow. Uh, the workflow is a directed graph which uh, can have many inputs and also many outputs. On inputs, uh, we have a sequence of data. On outputs, we also can have sequence of, da of data. Nodes uh, represent the activities and uh, edges, uh, dependencies between these activities. Uh, each node activity we can uh, represent also as a function. Uh, why workflow? Why I'm talking about workflow? Because uh, workflow is a, a base tool for scientific uh, compu compu computing. Uh, we have uh, such thing like a scientific workflow. It's a workflow, but very specific one. Uh, the data elements uh, in this workflow are sometimes uh, really huge from megabytes to even gigabytes. Uh, activities can be uh, long running and really resource intensive. Uh, also, uh, often uh, workflows uh, invoke legacy code, for example, written in Fortran or in C, or uh, using extensively external uh, resources. Mm, we've written down some crucial requirements for scientific workflows and they are as follow, parallelization and uh, distribution of computations, uh, persistence and uh, recovery, because uh, the computations are really long, long running and we sometimes want to uh, run, for example, the part of this graph uh, with different arguments, or we want to restore the state of the workflow after, to the point uh, before the failure. And uh, also, we want to have uh, a full control over the errors, so the fault tolerance. And actor model. Uh, actor model is a concurrency model when the main, uh, main units are the actors. Actors have a state isolation, uh, can communicate with each other uh, with uh, uh, messages, with async messaging and uh, they can uh, change their behavior in time, and uh, they can create uh, new actors. So there are, there are basically the main features of this uh, actor model. Why I'm talking about actor model here? Uh, here we see the simple uh, workflow, and in the middle now we see the simplification of the actor concurrency model. We can see that uh, if we will represent if, or if uh, of this node as uh, uh, actors, and if each of these <laughs> edges, like messages going between these, uh, these nodes, these actors, uh, so this, this model, uh, actor model can really fit in here. So we can spot some similar similarities. Uh, so why not give it a shot? Yeah, but we have a problem because actor concurrency model is really a simple, simple one. So uh, the inputs, for example, uh, in nodes, in nodes we have, can have many inputs. In actor we have only one input mailbox. Also the similar situation is with outputs. So in outputs, in nodes we have uh, different channels. And uh, in actor model, uh, we have a problem because we have only the simple messaging feature. Uh, also, flow patterns in scientific workflows can be really demanding and really complicated. So we must build some abstraction above it to, to uh, implement these uh, patterns. <coughs> and yes, so the question is, uh, why not use the actor streams? It's exactly what we need there. Uh, we have um, uh, in actor streams is a library developed by TypeSafe uh, around the uh, actor framework. is a, f a higher abstraction built upon the uh, actor model. Um, 
it supports complicated flows uh, through the beautiful uh, graph RP, and also it supports con concurrent data processing. So we can think that we must, we can use it for also the scientific uh, compu computation. But the account streams were designed to um, to handle very different target because account streams are for unbounded data stream uh, when in scientific workflows we rather have a bounded input data set. Also, uh, ACA streams operate um, on small elements rather than on huge ones. Uh, ACA streams are focused on back pressure, so mm, to, no, to not overflow the actors. Uh, when the scientific workloads are focused on scaling and Important thing in ACCA streams uh, is uh, the uh, high message through output and, uh, and in uh, scientific workloads we have rather uh, insist on recovery mechanism because it is more important than actual message through output because the computation are here the main, uh, the main thing and uh, yeah, we, we want to be able to recover this computation, the long-lasting long computations. Uh, also, we have current workflow engines uh, like Kepler, Taverna, or Pegasus. Uh, they are f but they are focused on graphical interface for non-programmers. Uh, sometimes has a complicated, have a complicated API. Um, they are really complex and yeah, at the end you always must write uh, actual code, so why not to use, uh, for example, the modern language like uh, Scala to read this, uh, to, to write this program. And here we are, uh, this is Kaflow. Uh, it's a simple workflow engine, uh, engine for scientific uh, computations, it's built from scratch. Uh, it's uh, designed for programmers for now, it maybe can have in the future some uh, UI. Uh, it's built with modern technologies in less than uh, 1,500 uh, lines of code. Uh, it's built with uh, language uh, Scala, uh, the toolkit Akka, and Cassandra uh, database. So we implemented, uh, to, mm, implemented some components to be able to uh, prepare actual flow, uh, like a source component when is, it is an input to our flow, uh, data processing compo component when actual uh, computations are happening, uh, data filtering component, data grouping, we can broadcast the data to other branches, we can merge after that this data, uh, we can synchronize this data so we take one uh, uh, message from the channel A and one message from the channel B and we are composed them together to, to the tapu and the data sync, so the uh, sync is output from our uh, workflow. Scaflow RP was, the idea was to design it the way that it would be similar to uh, Scala collections library and so we can uh, we, we, see this, we see here a very simple workflow which uh, takes the, as an input the data number sequence, uh, square, square these numbers and uh, group, them, group them by three and uh, sum uh, this group of three. So you can see this is a list uh, of data sequence. Uh, we have map operation, we have group operation sum and we are printing in on the console. Uh, and we are running this flow. Uh, concurrent computations in actor model. Uh, we have uh, two main patterns here as uh, uh, actor cannot uh, process the data concurrently so the actor must spawn uh, a workers to, and send them the actual job. Uh, first model is to push the data, so the master is pushing the data to the workers as soon as he gets uh, the uh, new data, new job to do, and the workers are doing the job for him. The problem is here that um, the messages are stored in a worker uh, mailbox, and this mailbox, when the actor uh, crashed, for example, there is a problem uh, which message to 
for example, re resend to this worker. Then we must resend all the day, all the messages they are that are stored in this uh, mailbox. So the other uh, approach is to uh, pool model. Uh, when the uh, worker is actually asking the master uh, for the job, the well, master only notifies the workers that the new job is available. So when they are not not busy, they can uh, uh, they can send the message that they want some to uh, pro some data to process. And uh, it's easier here to maintain uh, which worker is doing uh, which job exactly at the moment because the worker is doing exactly one job at the time. And scalability. Uh, in ACCA, there is uh, this concept that the uh, actor uh, location is transparent. Uh, so we can deploy these actors to another uh, host, to another remote machines, and to treat them as it, will, as it were uh, deployed locally. Uh, yeah, and that's all, and we have a scalability for free. Uh, workflow persistent state. Um, we use extensively here the uh, event sourcing idea. Um, event sourcing is actually implemented in ACCA um, as, uh, uh, through the concept of persistent actors. Uh, each, if, each command that uh, mutate a state uh, of the uh, actor produce the event and this event is saved to the external database. After that, we can restore all the state uh, from, from the database, reading, uh, reading the data and applying these changes to the state of the worker, uh, of the actor, not exactly the worker. And for example, here we have a new event, new message, uh, which come to the, uh, to the actor and we are persisting it uh, asynchronously mm, and we can then replay the events when the actor is restarting. Okay, and for tolerance, uh, so mm, we want to also provide some uh, strategies to uh, be able <coughs> to handle some errors and we used for this the standard uh, strategies from the ACCA framework, but we've changed slightly the behavior uh, of the strategy. And uh, for example, the restart method, the restart directive here uh, is, cause, is causing the cause that uh, uh, the message uh, for which the error was, uh, was raised uh, is uh, recomputed once more, and the stop uh, means that uh, we want to drop this message because, for example, it is a corrupted input and we don't want to process it. And uh, here, this, this is the API. Uh, we can put it as an argument to the map operation, the strategy, <laughs> and it simply will do the, do the job. And real world example, uh, this uh, workflow, uh, uh, this workflow downloads uh, some uh, biological pathways uh, related to the uh, particular gene identifier. Uh, so, uh, so on the input we are we have this gene identifier. We are downloading the all uh, path, biological pathways identifier connected to this gene. Then we uh, split this list to the separate messages. We are broadcasting uh, this uh, messaging to the uh, two separate uh, f branches of this uh, <coughs> flow, and we are downloading the graphical representation of the. Uh, of the biological pathway and concurrently we are downloading the uh, textual representation of this, of this pathway. And here is a code. Uh, I only skipped the actual code that downloading this data as it is not interesting here. So we have this uh, strategy for uh, HTTP uh, rest communication when the timeout exception occur we want to retry and uh, try to reconnect to this external database uh, to this uh, 
specific database. And uh, here we have uh, these uh, separate branches. Uh, one is to download the <coughs> graphical representation, and the second one uh, second is uh, to download a uh, textual representation of this pathway. And here we are composing uh, whole flow. And uh, we can spot here this. This is a source. This is uh, the map operation that download the uh, pathways identifiers. Here we split this list. And then we are broadcasting these messages to these uh, two flows. And we are running the flow. Scaling. Uh, we can add uh, this feature. Very easy. Uh, we are assuming here that uh, on the remote machines, we have up and running uh, actor system uh, on this address. It's here the local host, it could be something else, and on the sports. And uh, we can also add this information about waiting uh, actors uh, system on the remote machine uh, here to this map operation. And uh, simply this, will, this map operation will spawn uh, these uh, workers uh, on these uh, remote machines. And uh, everything else seems to be untouched by these changes. So it's really easy to add this, this value. Uh, you may wonder uh, what, uh, what is the uh, overhead on persisting this data to the external databases. Uh, because we are uh, we persist each event that mutate the state of the actor, uh, so I did a small uh, research. Uh, here's a small bench benchmark. Here I built a very simple flow and uh, put uh, different amounts of data through this flow, and uh, I measured the time of the uh, of the f how long the flow was running and uh, with different configuration. Here we, uh, we see the performance of the flow uh, without persisting feature. Uh, here is a Kafka back, uh, it's a Cassandra backend, and here is a Kafka backend, and here's default implementation uh, of, pers of this event sourcing idea uh, in uh, Akka. And we can see that, uh, yeah, we can spot some drop of performance, but uh, it was for, for 50,000 messages, it was like a three, two or three second uh, overhead. Uh, so for scientific computations, when we have uh, this long lasting uh, computations, it's, we can say, really nothing. And it's not a problem here at all. Uh, Yes, and future development of this Kaflow. Uh, I would like to add some graph API. Uh, I would like to be this graph API may be similar to the uh, Akka streams, as they are really clever. Uh, also, I would like to use uh, extensively Akka clusters idea and uh, Akka cluster sharding. Uh, we would like to also implement some workflow monitoring to have uh, the insight to this uh, workflow in real time. And uh, yeah, and maybe a few others idea. The code is available on GitHub. And uh, to sum up, uh, I hope I've, I've shown you in this presentation that the idea of actor uh, model concurrency really fit into the scientific, uh, computation scientific workflow. We have, uh, thanks to ACA, we can implement uh, a few crucial features in just a few lines of code. And uh, I think it's worth to investigate this topic and uh, to, to, to gain uh, f from, this, uh, from this actor model uh, w what what we can, because sometimes we need a right tool for the right job, uh, for for the for the job, and I think maybe it can be like Hadoop and Spark, where the Spark come in, uh, everyone was wow now I'm live in paradise, or it's really changing the thing. 
So maybe this approach to the scientific computation will be like that. And yeah, that's all. I would like to thank you, Bartosz Baisz from AGH University for the idea and the supervision and all of the advices during the research and whole scaffold development. Thank you. Uh, I want to ask about persistence. Do you guarantee anything? I mean, if node goes down or if electricity goes down, uh, would you be able to recover everything? Do you have tests, monkey chaos tests, for example? No, uh, it's uh, not a uh, proof of concept, but um, the so the question was if uh, the persistence um, is reliable here. Uh, so, uh, for the person, we are sending basically it to the um, other system like Cassandra. Cassandra can scale on different nodes and is, uh, we can say that uh, Cassandra is reliable. So, we are not managing here uh, any, uh, uh, we don't have here problems with reliability as, as the Cassandra can uh, handle this. If Cassandra cannot handle this, or something goes wrong with uh, Cassandra uh, uh, database, yeah, we also have a problem. I mean, for example, uh, if you have everything on the same node, and persistence means that power can go down or, or not, just uh, yes. so... Yeah, yeah, it's, it's because because the power is down, so we, we, we can uh, it's, it's, it's hard to say, it's, you know, when things crashes, it's really hard to say what's, uh, what's going on, but, uh, but the idea yes, is that, uh, uh, yes, we can. Uh, it will be persisted to the Cassandra, and after the power will be up, we will be able to restore this state, but we are not able to run, uh, run this uh, workflow uh, if uh, we have some... Uh, node failure when, when the uh, node which contain master worker uh, or ma master uh, will fail. So yeah, it's crash of the workflow and that's all. We can restart it. Okay, but have you tried to do that? Because you, you compare different things like level DB and Cassandra and uh, without trying to restore it's like nothing. Yeah, I was doing uh, another, uh, another research here. For example, I was um, I was stopping all the workflow and restore and starting it once again, and it works. I was uh, simulating some uh, failure, like for example, the uh, availability, uh, the uh, external service is not uh, available, available, so uh, the failure uh, finally occur, and uh, the whole uh, workflow crashes. And also, I was able to restore the state, but I was not simulating uh, the completely shutting down all the machines, like pressing the button off. I, I, I was killing it by, uh, in it. Yeah. yeah. I have one simple question. Harvest or the production ready? I mean, <laughs> maybe not the system, but uh, underlying ACA streams or? Yeah, ACA streams, uh, they are now in the main, uh, I, I come, what's your? Uh, I think uh, uh, yesterday was the release, uh, the official uh, release of the Akka streams, uh, the next version of, of it. And yeah, Akka streams are production ready. <laughs>